All right. So my name is Harrison Turner. I am a consultant that works for the National Department of Transportation with the Traffic Calming Program. Uh, it's a little bit after 6 p.m. on June 13th, and this is the traffic calming meeting uh, for Harrington Avenue. So if you have any questions as we're going along, feel free to drop them in the chat, and there'll be a couple of places in the PowerPoint, uh, as I share the PowerPoint, that will stop to ask questions about uh, the program and the concept, um, but feel free to drop anything in the chat and we'll we'll answer them as we go. And then we do have a time at the end uh, slated for questions as well. So to get started, um, we'll just do a brief overview of the program. Uh, so we're just going to start with what is traffic calming. And the uh, neighborhood street traffic calming progr program focuses on residential streets. We focus on physical solutions that encourage lower speeds over significant lengths and uh, the main focus of the program is speed reduction because there is a direct correlation between speed and safety. The three E's of traffic calming. Uh, the first one is education that things like this, uh, this meeting where uh, we can educate uh, the public on really the dangers of speeding and the effect that speed does have um, on the safety of the neighborhoods. The Second E is enforcement. Uh, this E is handled by our great partners at the Metro Nashville Police Department. Um, they, they handle the second E. And the third, which is near and dear to my heart as a traffic engineer, is the actual engineering. It's what we can do in the design of these streets uh, to promote a safer, slower environment um, for all users. And the reason is because we have a Vision Zero um, which is the vision that there will be zero fatalities on our roadway and just some stats to show how much uh, speed does affect safety. If a pedestrian is hit by a vehicle traveling at 25 miles per hour, they have an 89% chance of being able to walk away and surviving that, um, that incident. That chance goes down to 35% if a vehicle is traveling at 45 miles per hour. So there's a direct correlation between speed and safety, particularly on our neighborhood streets. This is a very, very popular program. Um, we have approximately 480 neighborhood streets as of March 2023 um, that have applied. And in the spring selection of 2024, we did select 25 neighborhood streets. A very popular program uh, across Davidson County. If you uh, have any questions outside of the uh, neighborhood street traffic calming program, uh, I highly recommend you use Hub Nashville. You can do that by calling 311 or you can go online to hub.nashville.gov. There also is a Hub Nashville app. Uh, I personally have used it to fix sidewalk in front of my house, uh, was able to take a picture, put it in, in the Hub Nashville, and it was sent to the correct people at NDOT to get a sidewalk repair crew out. Um, so if you have anything outside of the neighborhood street traffic calming program that would go to a metro entity like NDOT or Metro Water, please feel free to put it in the Hub and they will send it uh, to the correct department. So the way uh, we select these streets is through a matrix, um, and we have five characteristics that we look at when we are evaluating those uh, applications. The first one is vehicular speed, um, and that is the 85th percentile speed over 25 miles per hour. Uh, 25 is a nice slow speed where if there is an incident, most likely I'd probably be able to walk away. So that is the main part of the prioritization, that's 45%. Uh, the next biggest one is volume. Uh, the more vehicles you have on your roadway, the more chance there is going to be an incident. Uh, so that's a large chunk of the pie. And then the other three um, are vulnerable users and injury data, um, non-driver accommodations like lack of sidewalks, things that would promote people to be in the street, and then uh, trip destinations, which would be uh, pedestrian generators uh, that really push people um, into using these streets. So that's that's the matrix that we use to select select the streets from all those applications. So getting on into the details for your street, um, it is Harrington Avenue from Gallatin uh, to Idlewild Avenue. Uh, the 85th percentile speed is 34, and we we really would like that to be closer to 25. Uh, the volume is around 450 vehicles a day, and the street is fairly narrow at about 17 to 22 feet. It kind of varies in and out. But fairly narrow street, um, not a ton of volume, but it does have pretty high speed um, with the 85th percentile speed. So we would like to uh, lower that and get that down to a safer speed for, 
for everybody involved. So this is a location map of Harrington. Um, you can see it's got Gallatin Pike on the left and then Idlewild on the right. Um, fairly straight street, a little bit of a curb to it, um, but fairly straight street, which probably promotes faster speeds. So the way that we can engineer um, slower speeds is through uh, the tools that we have in our toolkit. So we're gonna run through those now and then we'll go into what exactly we are proposing for your street and show you a quick concept that we can talk about. So the first tool, this is our bread and butter. This is the main thing we like to use. Um, it is the speed cushions. They're very popular. They're um, installed all across Davidson County. They are modular rubberized devices. Um, they, re they have the gaps between them, so they have a reduced impact to emergency response vehicles, uh, but they still are wide enough that everyday uh, passenger cars and trucks uh, have to slow down for them. The specifications on them, they're about three inches tall. Their widths are about six feet, and then we can vary the lengths between seven, 10 and a half, and 14 because they are modular uh, so that we can pick the right cushion for, for your street based on the characteristics. The next tool in our toolbox, which is very similar, is the speed table. Once again, it's a modular rubberized device. Um, it is one, one table that extends the entire width of the lane, three inches tall, same height. The width is 21 feet on average, um, and those are about 14 foot in length. We do prefer to use the cushions to the tables when we can, just because of the impact it has to emergency vehicles. But they do have a great great impact at reducing speeds and making streets safer. This is actually a study from where we had speed cushions installed, uh, six different locations. The average speed for those roads before we had the speed cushions installed was 31 miles per hour. We were able to get it down to 22 miles per hour. And then the 85th percentile speed was 34 or 37 miles per hour. And we were able to drop that to 25 miles per hour at those locations. So we were able to get the 85th down to that 25 and had the average a little bit below that. So we, they do work and you can see around a 10 to 12 mile an hour, hour drop with these, look at, or with these tools. Another tool we have in our tool backs is a, the radar feedback sign. Uh, they're, they're great uses um, in places that we cannot use cushions like curves or hills. Uh, they provide constant feedback uh, for cars as they are driving. And they have an average reduction about six miles per hour and then the 85th percentile speed uh, goes down around seven miles per hour where we install these. Um, we do prefer the cushions where we can uh, to these feedback signs as they create a vertical deflection, but the feedback signs are great, great when we can't use the cushions due to geometric constraints. Another one that we're, we're able to do is uh, narrowing with pavement markings, particularly these white edge lines. Uh, they result in a uh, reduction of speed due to um, a narrowing focus uh, for the driver also creates an extra comfort level for pedestrians seeing the, the white edge line there and really focusing vehicles away away from the pedestrians. So that's it's a good use for wider streets um, where we can add, add that white line on the edge and try to narrow it down to the driver's eye. Another thing very similar um, idea is these bulb outs. Um, they can be striped or can have the uh, delineators in. And what they do is they fo force cars to take a sharper turn and really narrow down, which does reduce speeds, particularly at intersections. And it also allows pedestrians a little bit more room and improves vi visibility. Um, it does well, re require that cars can't park as close to an intersection with actual channelized striping and typically delineators as well, which does increase visibility for everybody at the intersection. Another thing, very similar idea is chicanes. Uh, typically, we like to do two-lane chicanes where it's in conjunction with some sort of like on-street parking as seen in the photos. And they do slow uh, vehicles down by adding some horizontal deflection. So on a very straight, wide street, people can go, go fast. If we add in a chicane, then they can no longer um, just gun it straight down the street. Uh, very effective with, with on-street parking. Another uh, tool we have in our toolbox is the traffic circle. Uh, we like to use these on very wide intersections um, so that we can take up take up that space and create that horizontal deflection uh, for people traveling. Um, it does does make the driver slow down to go around the circle, which is nicer than letting them just, just blow through the middle. 
So this is the uh, proposed concept for Harrington Ave. Uh, it is stop controlled on either side. So we are proposing five cushions between, or five sets of cushions between the stop signs. And they are spaced uh, based on engineering study uh, to promote a slower speed across the entire length of the roadway while still allowing people to go and not have a speed up slow down. So they're, they're close enough together that you have to stay at a slower speed, but not not too close that you're just constantly going over them. So for this street, we're we're proposing five sets of cushions. Um, any questions, comments, concerns uh, with the concept as as shown on screen? Awesome. Thank you for the comment. Um, I will uh, I'll keep going with the presentation, and if there are any other comments, questions, happy to circle back um, and talk talk more about it. But we'll move on uh, to next steps. So this is the um, program flowchart. So we started with that application. Uh, there are two cycles per year where communities are able to apply, and then it takes about two months uh, to go through all those applications, collect all the data, get all the street information, and then put everything into that prioritization metrics matrix and then uh, make make the selection based off that so then we are um, in the first neighborhood meeting for this street um, and that is advertised through mailers that y'all are able to uh, able to receive um, and that is this this meeting right here is that first neighborhood meeting as you see the next step is the design uh, we'll take any comments you have any questions um, use that information to go in and do a full-on design um, Thank you, Meredith. You have a great question. Um, so Meredith's question was about uh, slowing down two-wheeled vehicles as well. Um, they do slow down two-wheeled vehicles um, to an extent, not as much as four-wheeled vehicles because they do have the gaps between the cushions. Um, so it is it is more a comfort level of whoever is riding that two-wheeled vehicle um, because they're able to. They there is a slight gap, but I know I personally am not not very comfortable on a bicycle, much less a motorcycle, trying to shoot the gap. And there is a uh, question about Gallatin and Harrington uh, looking at bulb outs and a crosswalk at that intersection. That's definitely something we can consider um, doing some bulb outs and things at the Gallatin Harrington intersection. So we'll make a note uh, to look at that as we move into this design phase. Absolutely. These are great, great questions. So um, the design is, a, it takes about two months for us to get the design, get out all of the everything in place. Uh, we'll go out, make make field assessments, walk the site, make sure that we're not missing anything on that side. Um, then the next step, uh, we can move straight into an online ballot where uh, we send out ballots to the residents of the street uh, so they will be able to vote on it and to uh, be able to install the traffic calming measures. We have to have a 66% favorable vote. Um, if you would like us to come back and do a second meeting before we go to the online ballot, uh, we are happy to do that as well. Um, some communities want it, some want to say we're good with the concept, go, sh go straight to ballot. Um, it will take an extra month or so to get that meeting scheduled. So it does slow you down a little bit um, as far as getting you in the queue for construction. So uh, if you go straight to the online ballot a little faster, if you go get, want the second meeting, we can happy to do that as well. Um, and then the last thing is the uh, actual construction. So we have to get materials ordered. We have to get contractors lined up. Um, that does take a little bit of time, particularly with the materials, getting everything. And then because there is a very popular program, there is a, there is a queue right now to get, get these constructed. So that's currently about eight months or so from when the ballot passes to actually seeing, seeing the uh, cushions get installed. So um, we can go straight to the online ballot after this meeting, unless one of y'all would like a second meeting, then we'll, we'll do the second meeting. Just feel free to let me know either way. Um, but Typically, we go straight to the ballot unless somebody wants a second meeting. Uh, so the balloting is uh, very similar to the postcard for for this meeting. Um, it has a QR code. Um, yes, has has a QR code, and then you, each person gets an initial um, ID code that is for every single um, house. Voting is open for six weeks, and you vote yes or no. It does take a 66 percent. Uh, vote of the people who voted. So if 
10 people vote, we need seven of them to say yes. If two, three people vote, we need two yeses. Um, so it's not the entire street, it's how many people actually vote. So the uh, ballot zone, the people that are, are getting to be able to vote are people that physically have property that is are abuts the right away of the traffic calming project. Um, so that there's a map right here of all the houses in yellow. Those are the properties that do get a vote. Um, it is only residential properties, churches and schools, and you only get one vote. If you own multiple properties, you only get one vote. So you can't own half the street and get half the votes. Um, it's one one vote per property owner. Um, and it's only people that physically front the road because we want to make sure that it's the people that work, live and play on the road. They're the ones with the final say over what's installed. Um, vacant properties are ineligible. And then if there is a business, they are also ineligible because um, it's, it's a neighborhood street traffic calming program. So um, if you have any questions outside of this presentation, feel free to email NDOT directly at n.trafficcalming at nashville.gov and they will uh, forward that on or handle it internally depending on the question. Um, if you have any questions for me personally, uh, my name is Harrison Turner. Once again, I'm a consultant that works at Kimley Horn. My email is harrison.turner at kimley-horn.com. It's on the screen. Um, and I'm going to go back to the concept real quick and uh, take any any further questions. If, the, if you have them, feel free to speak up or drop them in the chat. All right, will we get notified prior to construction? Will that prevent the road usage and how long is the install? Uh, so as far as the notification prior to construction, um, that would be on the contractor. I'm not exactly sure if they do door hangers or not. Um, I can definitely get, get that answer back to you. Um, for, present, for preventing your road usage, uh, they, will, they will have traffic control as they're installing. Uh, so you'll still be able to use the street. Um, and then how long is the install? There's a, a lot of bolts that they have to put in, um, but it is bolting uh, the rubberized devices onto the street. Um, so it's not, not like you have to, you know, wait for concrete to cure or something like that. So it's, it's pretty quick for, for an install. And would consideration of Gallatin intersection improvements require a second meeting or could we just say add something there and just have the, have the say on the ballot? Yes. So, um, it does not require a second meeting. Um, what we can do is we can go ahead and look and see what we can do at Gallatin Pike and then, um, what you're voting on. Well, it'll have an attachment to the final final plan. So you'll be able to go and review the final plans, which would include any bulb outs or improvements we can make to Gallatin as part of that. So you'd be able to see it. The next question is about roadblocks in front of driveways. Uh, no, we, we actually have a distance that so we have to stay off of driveways with the cushions to make sure that people can drive enter their driveway back out and still make the turns without going back and forth over the cushions. So we do have minimum distances that we stay away from driveways. Um, typically, it's just enough to be able to back out and uh, go. And uh, that's that's part of the, the site visit is when we go out there, we go and physically look at exactly where we think we can put these. And that way in the field, we can go and make measurements and distances uh, to check slopes and everything. Yes, I can. Going back to the timeline slide. Uh, so this is the timeline slide. Is there anything in particular uh, you wanted me to go back over? Sounds good. So a uh, question about the sidewalk. So this is, this program does not, not build sidewalk. We typically don't do anything um, in concrete. That's actually a different program at NDOT. And what I would um, suggest is, let's see, sorry, I'm slip, flipping through slides. Um, there you go. So what I would suggest is to put that request in Hub Nashville um, and, uh, Put it in the uh, you actually it's on screen the streets roads and sidewalks um, section of Hub Nashville. 
and then uh, that will go uh, to to the program, and they will be able to um, look at it from a constructability standpoint and be able to put it in the list. Oh, there's a comment about the transit referendum uh, for funding the second second half of the sidewalk as well. So uh, just following up on that, that is that is coming up, uh, I do believe, this November. I know uh, our mayor is very excited about it. So um, definitely something you should you should consider and vote on. Absolutely. Is there any any other questions uh, from the group? All right. Thank you all so much. Um, I'm going to flash my email up again. And uh, if you all have anything uh, outside of this meeting or any questions, comments uh, that you want us to consider, feel free to email either NDOT directly or myself, and uh, we'll get that um, added into the design considerations. But uh, what we'll do is we'll go out, do that, to, um, finish up the design, finalize it. We'll double take a double look at Gallatin Pike the intersection and um, then we'll we'll go ahead with the balloting process and we'll have the the plans posted online for everybody to review as they're voting. But if there's uh, no further questions, uh, thank you very much for attending. And uh, y'all have a wonderful night.